Hello, Bobcats. Brad Schreffler here in a whole new world of distance learning. I want to get started with a really simple and powerful tool, and it's called Big Blue Button. A lot of online resources and things for distance learning have been talking about Zoom as a conferencing software in order to meet with your students. But the district in OCPS provides us with Big Blue Button, which is as powerful, if not more powerful, and also is more connected to the systems we actually use. So I want to start with the basics of Big Blue Button. Before I get to that, basically what Big Blue Button is, is a conferencing software. So it allows you to have a live session where your students can maybe see you, they can see your screen, they can hear your voice, and then they can also ask questions live in order to have a sort of replacement to a face-to-face -face option in this social distancing world. The way you might use this, you might use it for an open office hours for students to be able to ask questions and you're just available for students to pop in and pop out. You might use it to do a live lesson to actually present material to students with your voice and your presentation or whatever. Um, or you might use it as a Q&A for parents, which is another option as well. So this is going to be a really powerful tool while we are doing this distance learning. So that's why I wanted to start here. For this video, we're going to go through the basics of how to use Big Blue Button. And then in future videos, we'll go through some of the more advanced features. So to get started, you're going to be in Canvas, as you can see here. And you're going to go into your course, whichever course you're in in Canvas. And then on the left side of your course, you're going to see an option that says conferences. It doesn't say big blue button, so this is the one thing that's confusing. But if you, do, you go here, it says conferences, you're going to click on that. Once you're in conferences, yours will probably be blank if you haven't created any yet, but you see a couple that I've done here and have been playing with, so I had a, was ready for this. In order to get started, to, for you, you're just going to go ahead and hit plus conference. You're just going to add a new conference. The options are pretty simple. So first you give it a name. So in this case, I might call mine Office Hours 2, because I already have one called Office Hours. You can set a duration. So if you know you're only going to do it for 60 minutes, you can do that. I don't recommend this, mainly because if you decide to go over, then it's going to try to kick you out, and that's just going to be annoying. So in general, I'm just going to put no time limit, because that way I can talk as long as I want or be available as long as I want for students. And then I'm going to give it a description. Area for questions, whoops, sorry, questions and answers. Uh, if you're doing a lesson, you might say a quick description of the lesson. You might put the standards you're covering, whatever. As for who's available, most of the times you're going to want to invite all course members. That's just going to be all students and parents in your class. I don't see any reasons why parents shouldn't have access, but in general, you're going to want to do invite all course members. If you don't want parents along, then you can just click this button right here, which is remove all course observer members. That'll mean that only students can access it. It won't go out to parents as well. Uh, but in my case, I'm going to invite all and make sure they're all available right there. And then hit update. Now that conference is created, my students can see it if they want, and then to join it for myself, I'm going to go ahead and hit start. This will open up a new tab, and it will show me my conference session. I can join with the microphone of my computer, or I can listen only. So for most cases, you're going to want to click microphone, and then this will give you the option, do you want to access it? I'm going to say yes, and then I'm going to let it load. Once it loads and I heard that sound, I just go ahead and hit yes. Boom. Now I've got it. So my conference is all set up and ready to go. You'll see my microphone is live here. If I need to cough or something like that, I can quickly press mute and then I won't have to worry about that. But in general, I want my students to be able to hear my audio, so I'll leave that on. Then I can also go ahead and have two other options. So I have webcam and screen sharing. So if I want to turn on my webcam so my students can see me, I click that button right there, I click allow, and it'll take a second and find my webcam. And then it'll pull up right here. Hey everybody, how's it going? And then I can hit start sharing. So now that's available so that they can see it on the top of their screen. And there's my webcam. Excellent. The other option is I can share my screen. So if I want to share my screen with my students, I can just click that button. I can pick an entire screen. In this case, I have three screens on my work computer, but if you're just on your laptop at home, you'll only see the one. You can also click application window and find a specific window that you have open, or you can go to a specific tab 
on Chrome. So in this case, maybe I want them to just see my presentation because that's what I'm actually going to be covering with them. So I want them to just see the one tab on Chrome. So I hit sharing and there we go. So now I can change through different slides on my slideshow and my big blue button will always show that slideshow, not my big blue button screen. So my students don't see the chat, they don't see my options at the bottom, they're only seeing this. That's one option to show that screen if you want to be able to have a slideshow for them to see while you're talking. Once I'm done sharing my screen, I can just hit stop and I'm good to go. The last thing I want to show you in here is recording the session. So I have a recording button right here. I would highly recommend that if you are going to be doing a session, even if you want kids to be there live, some of your students are not going to be able to make it live. So please, I encourage you to use this recording option. This will make it so that a recording of the session is available to your students in Canvas after the session has ended. So all you have to do is hit start recording and say yes. That's it. Once you're done, you just hit this and that will stop the recording. That way, students will have access to it after the fact. We don't want any students to miss out just because they can't be available live. When I'm all done, I go ahead and I hit options and I hit end meeting. That's it. That is how you do a web conference on Big Blue Button. That is how you give access to your students so that they can watch your sessions and see you live. If you have any questions or comments, as always, you can reach out to me at bradley.schreffler at ocps.net, which is on the screen. This is a whole new world. All new things are happening right now in education, and I can't help but be just a little bit excited to be able to try some new things, to do some new things with our students, and see what happens. No, it's not going to be perfect, and I don't encourage anyone out there to try 50 different things this week. Give yourself two, three things to try, two, three new things to do, and that's it, and that, get good with those. I would recommend Big Blue Button be one of those things you try out, because it's live, it's pretty straightforward, you can do it from your home, and then still get to have your students see you, and get to interact with your students live, and also provides a recorded option for them when you're all done. I think it's a great place to start. But this is all new. Let's try it out and see where we end up.